all right youtube what is up so we're back here with the 3.8t install video so we got the remnant performance turbo kit right over here everything that was in it and now we're actually gonna get started on installing it on this 3.8 first thing we're gonna be doing is pretty much taking off this old intake anything that's connected to it we are taking off this is gonna come out completely so we got a hose clamp here this mass airflow sensor the clamp that holds this on over here you have two 10 millimeter bolts and over here you have your 10 mil another 10 mil that's pretty much going to be it on what's holding down this intake so let's take everything off real quick and we'll go on to our next step all right guys so as you can see the intake is now removed we also remove the snorkel that's right here to remove the snorkel it's pretty much one two three four little tabs that hold it in place so what we're going to be doing now is taking out the fuse box or not really much taking out more or less moving it to the side because this fuse box is going to get relocated so we're going to take this off for now take off the fuse box you just got two 10 millimeters right here you got one and two after you get those two 10 mils out you're just going to use a flathead right here in between this guy wedge it in between and the fuse box comes right up all right so we pretty much got the fuse box out of place what we're going to be doing now is taking out this throttle body so it's held in by this little sensor that's right here click on the tab and pull it out and you got one two three four 10 millimeter bolts that you need to take off for this you'll be able to remove it just like so so the next thing we'll be doing is taking out this 10 mil right here this 10 mil right here the 10 mil here and here the 10 millimeter right there as well and then there's a 10 millimeter that holds on this piece right here. So we're taking that off as well. After we get all those 10 millimeters off, we're gonna come over here. And as you can see behind or underneath that little hose right there, there are some bolts around the intake manifold. So as you can see, they're all around the intake manifold. These are gonna be 13 millimeter bolts or 14 millimeter bolts if you're stock. And then these top ones are gonna be Allen keys. So we're gonna go ahead and take these off real quick, get the intake manifold out of the way take out the spacer and go on to our next step. I also did forget to mention that you do have to take off this hose right here and then there's another hose right here. These are just simple clamps right here, these little pinch clamps. All right guys, so now that we have the intake manifold off, make sure you put, cover the ports with some shop brags or whatever you wanna use. That way you don't accidentally drop like a bolt or something down there. That's the last thing you're gonna want. We can go ahead and start taking off these uh, aftermarket headers that he has. He has J2 headers. The J2 headers do not work with the Remnant Performance Turbo Kit. So we're going to have to take these off and we're going to, have to put the stock headers on. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the strut bar real quick, put this fuse box to the side more, and then we'll start hitting the header bolts. All right guys, so as you can see, we have the strut bar assembly removed right now. Fuse box is pretty, uh, pretty much, you can move it however you want now. There are a few zip ties on here that are held onto it with the ground kit that it has. So I'm gonna have to cut the zip ties off. As of right now, that's not really my priority. Right now, what I really wanna do is actually take out the radiator fan. So the way how we do that is over here, we're gonna have this coolant reservoir right here and it's held by two 10 millimeter bolts. So one right here and then one right there. We're gonna take out these two 10 millimeter bolts, remove the coolant reservoir and it's gonna give us access to the other 10 millimeter bolts. Once you get the coolant reservoir out, you can see right behind here that there is a 10 millimeter bolt. And there's one also on this side right there. We're gonna take out those two 10 millimeter bolts and then we're also gonna take off this guy right here. All right guys, so now that we have the radiator fan removed, what we're gonna be doing next is pretty much taking off the whole front bumper now. So we're gonna start off by taking out these two clips right here. And over here, underneath this passenger fender, there's like a little bolt right here. It's gonna be an eight millimeter or 10 millimeter, I can't remember. It's gonna be on both sides. Once you got that bolt removed, there's a bunch of clips and bolts on the bottom as well, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. There we go. Got those fog lights, they're really easy to take off. You just push this tab in and pull out, like so. Pull out, and now your bumper's free. So we're gonna put this to the side and go on to their next step. So the next thing we're gonna be doing pretty much is taking out this headlight right here so that way we can get access to our washer fluid reservoir because that has to come out right now. Let's go ahead and take this headlight off. It's two 10 mils right here, right here. Take this tab off like so, and now your headlight's free. So now we have the headlight removed. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but in here there's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. And there's another 10 millimeter bolt right over here. Take out those two 10 millimeter bolts real quick.
And then after you take those two 10 mils out, there's actually a locking tab down here. It's a slide out tab. So you just slide the reservoir this way and it comes out. So once you get all that done, we're gonna take off this sensor right here. This is for the pump. Take off this sensor down here. And this one's really dirty actually. I might have to clean this up. Take off the harness from there. And once you have that last sensor disconnected, you can actually take this guy out. So I know when we're removing this, it might be a little tricky at first, but it's really not. So what you're going to be doing is pushing it up this way at an angle. And don't be afraid to force it because this tab right here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this tab will bend as you're pushing it up. So don't be afraid to push it up. All right, guys, so I'm going to be recording these next few parts with my phone real quick while I let the GoPro charge. So when I was taking this out, I noticed that there's a bracket right here that was pretty much stopping me from taking this out. Tilted in my two 10 millimeter bolts. This is what it looks like, this bracket. Once I got this bracket out, I was able to angle this bottom piece of the washer reservoir and pull it out. So now this is completely free. Okay, so now we're on the driver's side. So what we're gonna be doing now is pretty much draining our power steering lines. And the way how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take them off from right here. So this is a line right here and this is another line right here. As you can see, one goes to the rack, the other one comes from the pump. So after we drain the power steering fluid, we're gonna come right above it and you can see these two AC lines. So what we're gonna be doing is loosening these two 10 millimeter bolts and uh, we're going to safely remove the Freon from the lines. But you guys get the point of what's gonna happen next. So when you do this, be very careful. Give yourself some time away from your working area because it's gonna be a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this step real quick and then we'll go on to the next step. As you guys can see, my vacuum pump is working efficiently. It's hooked up to everything correctly and it's draining, it's draining the Freon. Now that we're done draining the Freon from the AC line, we're gonna come over here to the power steering and we're gonna take off these 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it down. Come down here, you'll actually see that the hoses that these are connected to, you're gonna to wanna to remove these as well. Just like that, our power steering reservoir is now ready to come out. So we're gonna put this to the side. All right guys, so now we are going to pretty much take off the 10 millimeter bolt right there. And if you look in down here, you probably can't see it from up here. But if you look down here, there is a 10 millimeter bolt down there that you also need to take off. It's gonna be right there. If you trace this line all the way out, this AC line, it goes all the way under there, comes back out, and then you can see it right there where it connects to the AC compressor. All right guys, and as you can see, we have the AC line out. Uh, just a quick note for you guys that when you are taking off either one of the top or bottom bolt first, it doesn't matter whichever bolt you try to take off first. Make sure you're really careful and go slow because sometimes this line can have a little bit of pressure in it still and it might pop. What we're going to be doing next is just taking out these brackets right here. They're for the front bumper, but you don't really need them. They don't really offer much support. So you just literally pull up on them, twist, and they take them out. What we're gonna be doing next is pretty much removing this brake booster line. So it's held in by two 12 millimeters or 10 millimeters, I can't remember it. And then there's a hose clamp right there. Reason being is because the washer reservoir goes right there. What we're gonna be doing next is pretty much prepping this harness to move it out of the way. Obviously it's held in by a bunch of zip ties. So you can see right there, there. Pretty much gonna cut all the zip ties off that hold this harness in place. Reason being is because the turbo downpipe is actually coming up this way. So we need to make room for it to come up here. That's one thing. And two, you don't want any of the wires to be close to it because then it can potentially melt the wires. As I was pulling up the harness, I forgot to mention that there is this guy down here. This is pretty much going to be one of your wheel speed sensors, I believe. So there's a clip on this guy that you need to push down on the tab and pull out. And then to take this guy off, you can see that up here, there's a locking tab for it. So you just push it forward and then it releases from that locking tab. And that pretty much frees up this whole harness right here and you can pretty much pick it up now. Okay, so as you can see, the harness is completely off the chassis now. It's actually right here. We'll actually start relocating this later on in the video. What I am gonna start doing now though, is I'm gonna start taking off this oil filter assembly right here. So we're gonna take out these four 12 millimeter bolts right here. One, two, three, and four, take out those four 12 millimeter bolts and remove this oil filter assembly. All right, just like so, the oil filter assembly is now removed. I'm gonna go ahead and let that drain out for just a little bit longer. While that's still draining out, we're gonna come over here, and I should have done this earlier when we're messing with the fuse box, but we're actually gonna be taking off 
this 10 millimeter holding on this bracket and we're gonna be taking out this 10 millimeter holding up this bracket. All right, cool. So now we got this area pretty much cleaned up. So guys, from here, we're gonna get under the car one last time and we're gonna start taking off down pipes and the test pipes or if you're stock the secondaries and the stock down pipes in my case though i do have to take off the headers so if you guys are curious on how to take off the headers you guys have eight bolts on this side and eight bolts on that side so there's a bolt right here right there two more bolts right there and then another bolt and then right under there's another bolt right there Right in his middle, you can see that bottom bolt two, that's seven. And then right here in the corner is bolt number eight. This is for the passenger side. They're gonna be 14 millimeter bolts. On the driver's side, it's a little bit more tedious to do because you have this coolant pipe in the way. Again, feel free to remove this coolant pipe. You just gotta take out this hose, this hose. And then back here, there's a 12 millimeter holding on this pipe. Oh, and I almost forgot, there's a bolt right there. You see that little bracket that's holding onto this coolant pipe? It's also a 12 millimeter bolt. So once you get those bolts and hoses removed from here, this coolant pipe pops right out. So feel free to remove the coolant pipe if that's what you need to do to get access to these bolts. The bolts on this side is there's pretty much four on top and four on bottom. I probably later in the video, I'll show you guys. All right guys, so we are under the car now. As you can see, this person has H pipes and a set of arc down pipes as well. And of course, it goes to the J2 headers. So what we're gonna be doing first pretty much is taking off these H pipes right here. So they're held in by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. It's held in by eight bolts that we need to remove to get this H pipe off the ISR single exit and the arc down pipes. Once we have the H pipe off, we're gonna come over here to the down pipes and then these are like, they're gonna be like 15 or 16 millimeter bolts. So there's two bolts holding it on, on both these down pipes. And of course, uh, you're gonna have this hanger as well that you're gonna have to remove. And on top of that, you're also gonna have to remove the O2 sensor that's right here. So this O2 sensor has to get removed and then vice versa for the driver's side you do the exact same thing on the driver's side so let's go ahead and get these down pipes and h pipes off real quick and then we'll start taking off the headers all right guys as you can see we have the h pipes and the down pipes removed i even went ahead and took off the headers over here i want to say i showed you all the bolt locations over here for this one if not there's a good look at it right there now we're about to go do the driver's side which is a lot more tedious to do so the way how i do the driver's side uh, when it comes to aftermarket headers is I like to do the four bolts on the bottom. So it's going to be one bolt right here, another bolt right there, another one right there, right next to the one on that right hand corner. There's, if you look, if you feel to your left, there's another bolt. So I end up hitting these four bolts from the bottom because they're the easiest to do while on the bottom and not on top. So I noticed with these headers that there's a particular bolt that is pretty much almost impossible to get to when having this coolant pipe in. So I am gonna have to remove this coolant pipe. The bolt that I'm talking about is right there. As you can see, it's like literally butt up against that runner right there. I'm going to go ahead and take off this coolant pipe real quick. Again, it's just this clamp right here, the 12 millimeter bolt that's right there. Then there's a 14 millimeter or 12 millimeter bolt right there. And then this will come off. As you can see, the coolant pipe is removed now. So now we have a much more better visual on the last remaining bolt. So there's one right there, one to your left, one right below it. And then right under here, I know you guys can't see it, but right there is the fourth bolt. All right, guys, as you can see, the header is now removed. So I think I'm actually gonna stop it right here, guys, because that's pretty much all you need to take off before you start installing parts. So everything else is pretty, pretty much gonna be the installation part instead of the removing part. I think this is a good stopping point for this video. I guess I'm gonna call this part one, which is pretty much removal. Part two, we're gonna start focusing on installing the exhaust parts, uh, mounting the turbo, and then uh, a bunch of other stuff in that video. I do wanna to note to you guys that if you do have to take off the headers, now would be a good time to put on that AC compressor line over here because you have all the space in the world to put it on right now. So if you have your headers off, I would 100% do that right now first before putting on 
the stock headers or whatever he headers you're gonna go with. But that's pretty much it guys for part one of this installation video on the Genesis Cube 3.8T uh, Turbo Kit install. I hope you guys liked this video. Part two will be coming out soon in the next couple of days and stay tuned for the rest of this uh, install. Peace out guys, see you next time.